How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another Pixel Platformer tutorial. This is part two in our punch tutorial and here's what I have changed. So I've added a bunch of different stuff here. It's not that bad, but I have changed it so we could actually do our punch. Let me actually play our punch first. Now, this is using the swoosh effect and originally I was thinking maybe I wouldn't use the swoosh effect for a punch and maybe we could do something cool with like a trail, but I think it looks really cool as a punch and Hopefully, by letting you see how I'm shooting this punch, you can see exactly how you could do a projectile system or a, just a different kind of punch. I'm excited to see what you can come up with. So now when we hit the L key, we can have this swoosh kind of come out and it goes in a downward angle. And the other thing is we can kind of jump around and now we can just everywhere we go we can just kind of do this swooshing thing that you see in a lot of games and maybe the impact is a little bit more and we could add that with a screen shake effect or something cool to make it a little bit more uh, impactful yeah, but that's exactly how it would work so now also I'm out of punches I can't throw any more punches so when I hit the L key now it doesn't work so let me go over what I changed so the first big change that I want to make sure I go over is our mirrored here so when our player is mirrored I had the angle wrong it needs to be negative 180 so make sure you change that the next thing that I changed was I created an image point for our slash so I mentioned it in the last video but I didn't actually do it. So here's how I did that. So in our player, in our origin points, I clicked add and I made one called slash. Now if we zoom in, you can see that I put the slash right there. And then what I did was I applied it to all animations. So every single animation has the slash image point, just like that. And it's going to spawn from that image point. So that's also very important. Then what I did is I increased our seconds, our rate punches by one. So now it's 0.2 and now it gives me a little bit more time to let it kind of just play the animation so okay those are the big changes the last big change i have is this and we'll get to that in a sec what i want to show you is our behaviors so if we go to our behaviors here i added a destroy outside layout and i stuck with the bullet behavior and my bullet behavior settings are different than usual so we have a speed of five now this is five pixels per second and if you increase this the speed of the bullet or I keep saying bullet because this is exactly how you would do a projectile system the speed of this or the the wind from our amazing punch here uh, is really slow so it doesn't go too far if we bump this up to 10 or 15 or if you put it to a thousand it would just fly across the screen so I put that down to five and that slows us down but i gave us an acceleration of 200 so if i put that to zero it would just kind of sit there and i wanted it to have some motion to it because otherwise it just kind of plays a little slowly so with the acceleration it that's how it gets a little bit further away from our player here so we have some range of motion and then we have some gravity now this is something that i actually have yet to really mess around with in a bullet effect but it's really awesome and i'm happy that i messed around with it i put our gravity so you can see that this when I, when I hit the L key, you can see that this is kind of angling downwards. And that's what I thought was cool. It's kind of like an extra swipe and it just feels a little bit cooler to me. So the gravity is pulling down this projectile and it looks really cool that way. So if you didn't have gravity, it would just be a straight shot bullet kind of thing, but mess around with it because now that you have a projectile system, you could do bullets, you could do a punch, something like this. You can maneuver it and there's so many different combinations you can make and there's a lot of cool settings here that you can just start tweaking around with. So that's pretty much how I did it. If we go over here, what I needed to have happen was when the slash object was created, I wanted to make sure that I waited for the animation to play out and then I destroyed it because I didn't want it to clutter up the scene and if you, if you just let it go, it's just gonna sit there. Uh, and we have a destroy outside layout behavior on it, but it's not going to ever get there because we're destroying it. So the way I did that was I just double clicked, went into our slash object and said on created. So whenever a new instance of this is created, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to wait and then it's going to be destroyed. And we're always creating an instance when we spawn it in our punch effect right there. Okay, so what I did next was I tweaked a few things with our keyboard controls here. So I had to separate our L is down. Originally we had this as L is down, so, and you should keep this in mind that if you wanted to do a bullet type that 
uh, actually like spam the gun and just kept going when you held, held down a button, that's what you would use this code for. But I didn't want that for our punch. Uh, and actually, I don't know why I have this twice. Let's get rid of that. But what I, what I needed to do was have it so when we are punching, all we, are, all we have to do is press the L key. That's all we had to do. And versus holding down the L key, which when you hold down the L key, we have it so it's just setting our animation. And that was important. So I removed the idle altogether because I didn't really need it anymore. And now we can actually do cool things. Like we, we can jump in the air and we can punch things in the air. So at least now we have that as an attack. So our L is down now handles just our animation and it's separate from our shooting or our punching. I keep getting those two confused. But it's separate from that for a good reason because if we combine these, then it would always, if we always held down L, it will always play that animation when we even even when we run out of punches so you have to nest this in here and there we go so hopefully that makes sense to you if it doesn't make sense just leave a comment and i'll re-clarify but i think that should be good and i think that is it i don't think i changed anything else that sorry for breaking these up into two it wasn't my original intention but i wanted to make sure that i got a punch effect that looked pretty cool in the next tutorial we're probably going to do some parallax stuff and when we get into doing enemies we'll make sure that they take damage from this punch and we'll get back to it so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one